What's up, everybody, and welcome back to week 43, tracking our local shifting real estate market here, Burlington, Camden, Gloucester County, Southern New Jersey. Oh, we're just those big counties just outside of Philadelphia. And today, I think we're going to have a little bit, a bit of an appreciation day. I want us to just appreciate where we started at the beginning of the year, the turmoil that we went through, and sort of where we've now ended up. Beginning of this year was, for lack of a better term, a wild ride. And you can see here, we got our blue graph just showing kind of the, where what happened, right? In the January, February, March, April. What did we see? Well, in our blue with our total active listings, we saw listings just tank, right? We lost almost 30% of the available homes to purchase at, a, at, the, at these price points. That's huge. That's a, I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care what your job is. You lose 30% of the stuff that you need to do to do your job. Stuff's going to go wrong. It's going to become difficult. And we all felt that, right? This was like the big inflation period at the beginning of the year. It was the start of the Ukraine war and all that stuff. Like there was just like a lot going on in there. I might be a little early on that second part, but nevertheless. But then we see what happened to median list price in the same time. January, February, March, April. It didn't look that crazy right then. But we have to remember at that time of the year with inflation shooting up, we didn't know what was going to happen. The listings were tanking, so everybody was just kind of like, what's going on? And we know that price always lags a little behind kind of what happens with inventory. There's always kind of this one to two month gap where realtors start feeling that pinch. And then the next listing appointment they go into, they start talking about, okay, hey, inventory's been down. We want to price up a little bit higher. And we see that, right? So we bottomed out here in April, May, and June. And that's when you saw the huge price increase. That's when you saw April 319, May 325, up to 338 in June. Now, luckily, and again, it's incredible this week, we are literally on the dollar, basically the same that we've had for, for a while here. You know, small changes, but nevertheless. But really, since June, July, August, and September now, we have had a fairly stable pricing structure. But that's not the whole story. Just because the prices have stayed consistent doesn't mean that your payments have stayed the same. And I think we can all say it too. Did you want to say it with me? Why have payments gone up even though our prices have stayed the same, Connor? Interest rates. Interest rates. Interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. So now you see in the red, our median list prices stayed the same. But as we look down here in the blue again, we see that our total active listings have steadily climbed. So in what world, why? So here's the here's what we want to take a look at. This data at face value doesn't make sense because it's missing a category. It's missing the interest rate. And I don't get into interest rates here because I think lenders do a much better job talking about them. I don't want that to become what the show is about. It's just a weekly rate update. You can get that from a lot of sources. I just like to talk about it in the context of what these other metrics are. So you see in June, July, and August, and even September, and really coming into October, I mean, if you look, we're on pace in October here, these total active listings, we may end up averaging close to 1,500, right? So that's January levels of total active listings that'll be going up. So here's the riddle, right? Why in June, July, August, September, and probably going to be October too, why has prices stayed exactly the same? But we've seen the total active available listings increase again, almost regaining that entire 30% back, or more like 25% since it came up, you know, April to June. So what happened? Well, the prices stayed the same. Listings went up because there still weren't as many buyers able to capture all that inventory that was replenishing on the market. And why? It's because with every single half a point that this interest rate has increased over that period of time, that kicks out another wave of buyers. And it goes up from six and a half to seven, it kicks out another wave of buyers. From seven to seven and a half, another wave goes out. Seven and a half to eight, another wave goes out, right? So our buyer pools have just started to dwindle, right? So you don't have as many people going after the listings now because they're all getting kicked out and priced out due to interest rate problems. And so even with those in those listings increasing the amount of them, our prices have stayed the same. So anyway, I, that, that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to talk about today. Because as I was looking at this and as I was prepping for today's video, I, I recognized, I just said, there's something in the second half of this graph that isn't adding up and we had to really factor in. There's an affordability context that we also want to include. Now I'm 43 weeks into the year. I, I got nine weeks, odd weeks left basically until we're wrapped up for this year. Next year, we're going to start 2.0. Uh, but what I think we're going to do is we're going to start adding in a couple 
extra stats. Now, it's going to take more work for me, but you know what? We're on such a good kick here. This has been so helpful to so many people. I think it's just a matter of expansion now. Let's start bringing in, I think one of the, the, the data points that I really want to start talking about is also closed price, right? And, and what is the ratio between list to closed prices? Are we still getting that 102%, meaning if something's listed at $100,000, it's probably selling at 102 on average? Or is it 98%, right? Saying that if you list it at 100,000 on average, it's going to sell at 98. That tipping trigger is going to make a huge dynamic shift in kind of our perception of the market growth from a buyer's and seller's standpoint. It's going to really change the investors that start reapproaching the market again, who have basically been unable to buy for rent properties at the moment because if they were doing it on any sort of a financing, they're just being priced out from an interest rate standpoint about what's affordable. So we've seen seller financing type offers be on the rise in different creative financing avenues, right? Our basics this week, I like our golden ratio, new listings, pendings, closed, a little bit off on the pending and closed, but still more listings coming on that's replenishing. As, as good as this is, I'm not complaining about it, but we will start hitting a tipping point where it's like, okay, we have a lot of listings that keep coming on the market here and they're not getting taken off. You know, this, this dynamic shift from, from a seller's market to a buyer's market could happen in a weird way. The, it's going to keep sliding until an interest rate drop happens and then it's going to push it right back up. And I think they want to try and ram us as far down as they can while kind of almost tipping the scale back in a buyer's favor. And then as soon as those interest rates go again, it's just going to flip all back to sellers. So all that's fine. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Everything stayed kind of in line this week, but let's jump to the second half of this video here for a second. So I know if you want to just get the stats and you're good and you want to hop off here, totally understand. But, but here's the thing. Last week, I talked about a program called Cash to Keys. And I, I, you may have even gotten a text message from me. I sent out, I sent a text out to, I'm not gonna lie to you, okay, sales guy right here. I'm not gonna lie. Sent that out to about 500 people. Just gonna, just gonna say I did, I did. But that's because I think it's such a. I'm not a big spam texter. I, I don't like it. I literally talked to my coach about the fact that I don't like doing those things because I don't want to just invade your personal world when you're not expecting it, right? That's why I believe the email, the newsletter, and videos online are much more approachable because you can approach me when you're thinking about real estate. But every once in a while, I got to put something in front of you, even if you're not looking. I got to put something in front of you. And that was the cash to keys. Now, there's a second part of that program. The cash to keys is if you do not own a home and you need to buy a home and you want to be competitive and have your offer backed up by a cash offer, right? That's what cash to key was. Now, last week, I went over the entire FAQ sheet and it was very helpful. I had multiple people reach out asking if I could send them the PDF. I hopped on two calls about it. So, Again, same thing with this call. If you're interested in having just a short call, these were just helpful calls. These were just like, I hopped on sitting in this room like this with you and we just chat, right? There's no like, oh my God, you got to sign something before. No, we're just chatting, right? That's the whole point of this. Just chatting about real estate. But let's flip here to what's called buy now, sell later. Okay, I'm going to move my fat head over here a little bit. So what's the difference? Well, Cash to key is the first one, that, that cash offer. That's specifically if you don't own a home and you run it. But this, obviously, there's a lot of you that do own a home, right? Let's talk about two problems. The first problem is if you own a home and you bought it in the last 10 to 12 years, you probably have a super low interest rate that you don't want to give up. And I get that. And personally, don't. Stay where you are. If you can ride this out and you can continue to stay in your home without having to move at the moment, as much as it pains me, and it pains my industry, I would encourage you as a human to stay. Make the best of what you have in your current home. Make the best of it. Improve the space as you need to. Maybe if you have to put on a, an addition or if you have to you know, finish the basement or you got to whatever, convert the garage to give yourself that extra living space to accommodate what your needs are today. Do those things today because I really just don't think from a financial aspect, if you don't have to sell, like look, new baby, kids, you know, you're retiring, your kids graduating, you know, things like that, people are going to have to move. But if you don't have to, one of those situations, it's probably a good idea to wait another year or two to allow this whole interest rate thing to just kind of settle back down. Now, I think you're going to get into the sixes. I don't think it's going to go much lower than that. So it's not like you're waiting for this to go back to three because it just won't. It really won't. I will, I will wear a two, two down Main Street Morristown if the rates hit 3% in the next five years can't believe I just said that because if that happens, that's going to be rough. But anyway, all right, let's get back to this. So what I want to do is basically review as we did last week, this buy now, sell later program. So that first problem is the interest rate twist. The second problem is what this addresses, and that's the contingency aspect. I have somebody under contract right now in Cherry Hill, and they are what's called cash contingent. Their house in Cherry Hill is completely paid off. And they're looking to downsize, right? They're just, they're in their sixties. They're looking to get rid of their, you know, big 28, 
3,000 square foot house and buy a townhome. They'd love an end unit, that sort of deal, right? Not, not uncommon, right? Pretty common example. The problem is they like refuse to get a mortgage, refuse. They would qualify to buy the new house with a mortgage and be non-contingent. That's to me is a little bit of the crazy part of it, but it's their choice. It's their culture. It's what they want to do. They don't want to get a mortgage. So with that being said, we have to figure out, okay, we've submitted a couple offers now with you being cash contingent and we have had no takers. So what can we do now with those people specifically, they're like no mortgage ever period. But, but there's a lot of ways you can have this and maybe pay it off sooner, not hit as much and all those things. So let's just, let's walk through this, right? I've, I've kind of, I've teed this up enough. I think it's time for us to just start work, working through this together. All right. So what is the Annie Mac cash to keys buy now, sell later program buy now, sell later eliminates the need to sell your home before you buy. It's pretty obvious. Instead of listing your home with nowhere to move, Annie Mac will make a cash offer on your behalf before you sell. When the offer is accepted and cash to keys closes, you move into the property and accrue rent that you pay after you've sold your home. Buy and move first, then prep and stage your home to maximize your sale price. All right, let's just keep going. I don't want to add too much commentary. Let's just keep going with this. What if I need to sell my home to buy another? Very common. Buy now, sell later, as the name states, allows you to turn this traditional requirement on its head and buy before you sell, right? We know that I need the cash from this house to buy that house. So how can I do this? This is how. They've made a program for this. They will make a cash offer on your behalf for the new home and allow you to move into the new home and rent immediately upon closing. The rent is accrued, but not immediately paid. That, that's an important one, right? You're accruing rent in this new home, owing it to, to cash to ease, but you're not paying it. So you're not making you know, mortgage payment on the old home and paying this rent payment here. You're not doing that, right? You're just accruing rent while just making your mortgage payments on the old home, okay? So you will never have two housing payments. After you've sold your own home, you will buy your new home back from cash to keys. Right. So I have house A, which is the one I'm living in, and house B is the one that I want to purchase. Right. So I move from here. I now buy house B effectively with a cash offer. I move into it. So now house A, my original house, is vacant, and I've now moved into my new house. Okay. So I'm accruing rent in house B, and my now I have in my house A, I have a period of time, which I think we'll get to, to then get it ready and then list it for sale. Okay. Does Annie Mac Cash to Keys purchase your current home? Cash to Keys wants you and your agent to sell your property to the highest offer. For this reason, we allow you to move into your new home and have two weeks of preparation to make it shine for potential borrowers. Cash to Keys only purchases your old home as a last resort. Right? If your home has not sold in 194 days, Cash to Keys purchases your home for the established conditional purchase price so you can take title to your new home. So here's the deal. You either sell it in 194 days or Annie Mac buys it. And then they'll go and resell it, right? They'll handle the resell. But for you, you get to you know that it's going to be sold in 194 days no matter what. Okay. And we know, looking back at our days on market, our average days on market are between, you know, 56 is 26 is our medium and 56 is the average. So it's likely in this market, if you have a good listing and we price it properly, we stage it properly, and that's where a realtor comes in, right? You're going to sell this thing in probably 30 to 45 days, especially if you're in the counties that we're talking about, right? Burlington, Camden, Gloucester counties. Now, a lot of this would apply to a lot of other counties, but for us, I can speak on record here in terms of statistics that I know, we're likely going to sell your house in a month, probably less, right? Our team's marketing is fantastic, so we would probably sell it many less. All right, back to this. How much will the rent be on my new home until I complete the purchase, right? So, okay, all right. Great. You're, you're already hitting me with fees, right? You're already hitting me with these amounts. But let, let's think about this. The rent will approximately, the rent will be approximately equivalent to the total of what the mortgage, tax, insurance, and HO payments be will be on the property with no down payment, right? So they'll say, okay, if you bought this with like a VA loan, like a hundred percent loan to value, just your pity, right? Your principal and interest, your taxes, your insurance, and then if you have an HOA, just what are those payments together? It's basically at cost, right? They're renting it to you at cost. That's effectively what they're doing here. Okay. So da, da, da. you will accrue rent from the day that any Mac Cash Keys purchases your property, but will not pay the rent until you sell your home. The rent will be prorated, so you won't pay a full month's rent if you rent for less than a full month. That's obvious. The buy now sell later agreement that you sign after approval specifies as your rental payment. So A, you'll know about the payment up front. It'll be all disclosed and you'll understand it. You won't be paying that rent while you're living in this new home. So again, let's say if it takes you three months to sell your own home, you'll have accrued three months worth of rent. And then when you sell that other home, just out of your closing costs, they'll just deduct the three months. So it's just coming out of the proceeds of the old home anyway, right? 
let's come back up here. Okay, how do you determine how much equity I have in my home? Typically, an interior BPO broker price opinion must be conducted in your current home. A broker price opinion is basically a realtor running comps for you. They would just say, hey, if I were to list your home or in a fair market value, here's what it, it's a little bit more complicated, but the, the general gist is the CMA. Do I need renter's insurance while I rent and before I buy? You should strongly consider renter's insurance. Our insurance does not cover your personal property, right? Renter's insurance ensures your belongings in the home, not necessarily the home itself. It ensures your belongings. Generally, the homeowner, any Mac, would get homeowner's insurance. You would get renter's insurance inside the home protecting your belongings, okay? Are pets allowed while you're renting? Of course, there's no restrictions there. Does my agent still make money off the transaction, right? So, you know, a lot of people would fear, oh, am I kicking my realtor out? You know, all that. No, we're, we're still included normally, right? That's normal. If my state charges a real estate transfer tax, how is this handled across the two transactions? If you're doing buy now, sell later, or cash to keys, steps in for your cash ball for purchase, there will be two transactions. Any Mac cash to keys will pay any buyer's share of the transfer tax on the first transaction, and on the second transaction, you'll pay all transfer tax associated with that transaction. Now, here in New Jersey, we don't really have a buyer transfer fee as much. Um, if we do, it's called it's probably something slightly different inside of the Alta, which is what you get at, at, at settlement. But we do have a seller transfer fee. Now, if you Google NJ Realty transfer fee right now and you hit calculator, there is a button there that you can just type in 300,000 or 400,000 or 700,000, and it'll give you exactly what the seller transfer fee is. So that would just be the additional cost that you would pay if you did have to kind of do both of the transactions, right? So let me just read that one more time. If you're doing the buy now, sell later, cash keys, steps in for your cash offer purchase, cash offer purchase, there will be two transactions, right? So you have two transactions. They'll pay for the buyer's share of the transfer tax on the first one, but then you would take care of any transfer tax on the second one. So there is cost associated with this, right? I don't want you to assume this is free. There is a cost associated with it. But again, I would argue we sit down and we would talk to some people and we would say, okay, how much would you be willing to pay if I told you that we didn't have to worry about the in-between and putting your life on a truck? You'd say that's worth some amount of money to me. Well, that's what this is saying. Now, for some of you, you may say, no, I'm not. The amount of extra that I would quote unquote have to spend, I'm willing to handle the stress. I'm willing to handle the stress of lining up two transactions, having them both close on the same day so that at 10 a.m. I'm selling my house for four hours. I'm homeless with my entire life on a, on a moving truck sitting outside the new house. And then later that afternoon, I sign on the new house and then they can start moving everything in at 430. You may like that. I'll just tell you as a realtor, there's a lot of people that hate that. I'm just barely starting to grow my gray hairs here at 32. Most of them have come from those days. Just saying. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling. What does the buy now, sell later process look like? All right, so this is helpful, right? Main steps in a buy now. Get pre-approved, right? So work with Andy Mac Home Mortgage to submit your income and asset documents for a full review. Have your interior broker price opinion completed on your current home. And if you're pre-approved with buy them, you are assigned a purchase home coordinator that will work. Right, so we knew this. The HPC, the home purchase coordinator, same thing on the cash to keys. It's just someone that helps in addition to your loan officer. So that's fine. We go through a normal pre-approval process. That's fine. We get the, the broker price opinion on your home. That's something I can help you out with. That's all fine. All right, that's easy stuff. Buy now, sell later agreement. Your home purchase coordinator will discuss the steps and what is required of you up front. They will give you this information in writing and there will be a buy now, sell later agreement with ADMAC Cash to Keys to submit a cash offer on your behalf. This agreement will also contain a conditional purchase price to buy your current residence in 195 days if it does not sell sooner, most homes sell sooner, right? So let's break this one real quick down. Okay, we get in, we talk to our home purchase coordinator, they say, hey, here's the agreement. There's two things on this agreement. One, this is the fees and this is what's gonna happen for us to make the cash off on your behalf. And here is the broker price opinion of what your home, and we all have to agree on this, right? You have to agree with what, what the pricing is and things like that. Here's the broker price opinion of your home and here's what, what we will effectively buy your home for if you don't sell it for any period in between. Now you can totally go and sell the home for more than this, right? If you have this listed, you could totally make more than this. This is just saying, here's exactly what, we'll buy it in 195 days if you don't, 66 months if you don't sell, right? So now we're all done. Find the home you love. When you do, your real estate agent and your cash to keys home purchase coordinator will spring into action and draft and submit the cash offer. We're just out shopping now. We've drawn all this up. We just get you pre-approved. We get the we get the price, the broker price opinion. We have this all we get your home purchase coordinator. You're all just set up there. And then we just go shopping as buyers while you're still living in your home. While you're still living in your home, now we get to shop as buyers. So you can do this out of the comfortability of knowing that, like, I don't have to try and find something and then ask this. Well, how much time do you need for settlement? I got to sell my home. It's not even listed yet. I'm going to need 75. Like, none of that. Sorry for my little Kermit voice. None of that. We just get to go shopping, right? 
Secure your home. When the seller accepts your offer, you and your agent can arrange for the home to be inspected and the property appraised, right? So inspection and appraisal, still, we're not skipping those, right? You will review your disclosure documents, submit your earnest money to buy or your escrow and cash offer fee outlined in the service agreement that you will sign with them and review your home inspection. So there's probably something you caught here, this cash offer fee. Now, at the time of signing the contract, you're going to basically put two escrows down. You're going to put an escrow for your contract for the home purchase, and then you're going to put this little cash offer fee off to the side. Okay, but just stay, pin that, and we'll come back to it because we address it as we keep rolling through. Okay, then now that you've, oh yeah, cash to keys close. Any Mac cash, to, I went one too far down. Any Mac cash to keys will close on your new home. So 30 days go by, we have our inspection, we have the appraisal, everything goes fine. We approach, it's a Thursday, we go to closing, we settle, you go there and everything, and Any Mac closes on the new home and they basically make a cash offer, right? So when they do, you take possession and can move in right away because you are moving in as a renter to this new home, right? So that your rental period begins the day cash to keys closes, but the rent is not paid until you take title, which would happen once you sell your old home and then you actually buy the new one. List your old home for sale, right? Maybe your home needed some touch-up or staging to maximize your sale price with two weeks from cash to keys closed before you must list your home for sale. You'll have just enough time to get your home looking right so that the buyer's bid aggressively. Great. So I can get you out. We can move all your stuff out if you feel like, oh my God, I got so much stuff. I got all these belongings. Like, let's get you out of the house, move you into the new house, and then you can worry about cleaning up the old one. Close on the sale of your old home and purchase your new one from cash to keys. So Six to seven, they're kind of jumping a skip here, but six to seven is we put your home on the market, then we entertain it like a normal listing, right? We can set it as vacant go and show, we can set it as minimal notice for showings. People go in there, we go a highest and best, we get more offers or whatever it is, and then we go under contract, they have a home inspection on your home, your home gets appraised if they're buying with a mortgage, we go all the way through, and then it's time to close. So now we now let's move to this one. Close on the sale of your old home and purchase your new one from Cash Keys. When your old home sells, you are ready to complete your purchase. In the unlikely event that your home did not sell in 194 days, cash to keys will purchase it according to the terms of conditional per price on day 195. In states that charge the real estate transfer tax, you'll require to pay all the transfer tax for this final transaction. Okay, yeah, we knew that. Is Annie Mac private equity cash to keys a mortgage lender? So Annie Mac is, but the Annie Mac cash to keys is not, right? We are a business entity that purchases homes to secure them for you, our customers who eventually buy the new home from cash to keys. Our affiliated company, Annie Mac Home Mortgage, is a mortgage lender. So Cash to Keys is effectively, oh, it says right here, a private equity company that partners with a mortgage company in order to offer this service, okay? Now, who makes the offer to the seller? You'll work with your agent to make, negotiate, and finalize the offer with the seller. Your dedicated Cash to Keys Home Purchase Coordinator will assist and ensure the offer meets the terms of the approval. So just like you work with your realtor, we go together, we see the house, we run comps, we go through the offer, we get everything pretty much ready, and then we just run it by the Home Purchase Coordinator, and they say, like, yep, okay, good to go, here's our here's our addendum, and we go from there. Who orders the inspection? This is will be your home, and you're responsible for ordering the inspection. I wouldn't want it any other way. We have great inspectors here. Tell me about the two contracts, right? Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit of... Uh, sniffly nose here. Tell me about the two contracts. With buy now, sell later, there are two transactions. First, Eddie Mac Cash to Keys purchases the home for you and you take possession. And then after you sell your old home, you buy the home from Cash to Keys. A purchase contract is required for each transaction. Okay. So buy now, sell later, two transactions. First, we buy the new home, you move into it, you start renting from it. And then we go and we sell the old home. And then you come forward and you buy the new home from Cash to Keys, right? What is the closing date of the contract between Cash to Keys and me? The closing date is written as on or before six months from the date in which Cash to Keys purchases the property for you. The closing date is often much quicker than six months, and Annie Mac Cash to Keys will close on the sale to you as soon as you are ready. Make sense? Cash to Keys closed on my new home. Now what? You take possession as soon as we close on your new home. You transfer the utilities in your name. Your agent will collect your new keys from the listing agent and give them to you. That's just standard closing procedure. Nothing different there. What is a conditional purchase price? When you choose to buy now, sell later, that will be a conditional purchase price. The purchase price is conditional because if you sell and get under contract for a higher price within 194 days, you are entitled to sell for the highest price and best terms offer you. If the rare instance where you do not receive a higher offer, Annie Mac will purchase it for that conditional purchase price. Okay. How do you arrive at the conditional purchase price? We typically have an interior bro broker price opinion completed and perform an analysis of home sales and listings in the market. The conditional purchase price is typically, ready for this, typically 86% of the home's market value minus a 6% real estate sales commission that will be paid when cash to keys resell the home. Now this is the kicker. 
And I like how they put it last. And that's why we read this all the way to the end, because they always leave that one piece that might make you not want to do this all the way at the end. So what they're saying is this, look, if you could sell your home for $200,000, right? Our conditional purchase price is going to be 160. Well, it'll be like 172 or something, but minus the commissions, right? So it'll be 172 minus the commission. So you'll only walk away with 160 on a $200,000 effectively, you know, what we believe the home is truly worth today. Now, what you're doing here is a, a balancing of risk. Okay. In this market, do I think that my home is going to sell in less than six months? Sorry. Probably. Okay. So the risk is already lower on the cash key side than it would be for the traditional sale. Some things I would consider if your home's in really rough shape, that could slow it. If you're unrealistic about the prices that you'd be willing to sit, accept for it, that could, that could affect this. But this is where I see probably the biggest detractor to this program is that if they have to do that full six months, you don't get to decide just to decide, well, all right, fine. I didn't get to sell it. Let's just do this again next year. No, you've already moved into that new house. You've now accrued six months of rent into that new house. You have the cash offer fee. You, you have some skin into this game at this point, and you're going to take an 80, you know, 80 percent on a, out of 100. You're going to take a 20 percent haircut on the sale of the old home. So that is a risk. That is a risk. But I would argue for most homes in Burlington, Camden, Gloucester County, if you're in good shape, you have good equity in the home and everything like that, and you don't want to deal with that hassle. This still has a very important place in the contingency, non-contingency conversation between the two. So that's going to do it for us this week. This was a pretty good uh, conversation around some of this stuff. I'm kind of wrapped up here with the cash to keys, the Animax stuff. The cash to keys was last week. This was the buy now, sell later. We've now reviewed all the FAQs, but here's my last little leg to you. If you want to talk about this with me, I'm technically a certified cash to keys realtor. If you would like to talk to an, a local Annie Mac loan officer. We, I know one right in the area that I could put you in touch with. And if you'd also locked, like to talk to a qualified cash to keys licensed attorney right out of Morristown, I could put you in touch with him as well. So we have all these resources for you to consider this. We have been doing a shifting real estate market, folks. If you're not shifting the way you think about real estate, you've fallen behind. Consider it. Let's talk about it. All right. That's going to do it for this week. I'll see you next week. Happy Halloween. See you.